Okay, so good morning everybody and uh, welcome to this webinar. Um, towards the end of the week now, so I hope you've all had a good week. So uh, my name's Sarah Wendland and I am a trainee um, educational psychologist um, training at the UCL in London um, and I'm on placement here in South End on Sea. Um, and this morning I'm joined by two of my lovely team um, as well from South End on Sea who can introduce themselves. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm Lauren, I'm also a trainee educational psychologist uh, working here with the lovely South End team. Morning everyone, I'm Kate. I also work in South End but as an assistant and uh, we're really happy to be supporting Sarah this morning. Great, so this morning we are hopefully going to do something a little bit different to some of the other webinars and hopefully it's going to be quite interactive because we're thinking about games that can help build and support our communication skills. So um, if you do want to join in at home, you will need some coloured pencils or coloured pens or just a pen and some paper. Um, so I'll give you a moment to try and find that when I give my little introduction about what we're doing. Um, so yeah, so skills about building communication. As we saw from Paula Pashley earlier on in these webinars, um, play is such an important um, part of development, of childhood, of even growing up into adulthood. You know, we all interact with play and it provides so many great opportunities for learning, for growth, for exploration and for communication skills it's no different. We can use play and games to help support our communication skills build, develop, grow and be extended. Um, and it all starts from, you know, when, when children look really small, you're sat there with them, you're driving the train and you're going choo choo, choo choo, and you're using your language to give them the understanding of what's going on and ways to communicate it. So it's building on that idea of us as adults or us as um, people with better or more communication skills, modeling and showing um, younger children or, or our peers how to use that communication in a different way or in a new way. Um, so, well, the first bit game that we're going to have a look at is based on barrier games, um, and these are used within schools, within educational psychology, within speech and language, and are really adaptive and versatile and can definitely be used at home as part of play, as part of fun games with all the family. Um, they're, not, they're not specific, they can be really adaptive, so it's a really great one to use, and they are used to our receptive and our expressive language so both our understanding of language and how we act on it alongside production of language and using it to communicate um, with others so it's really good it as can work on both things it's not specific um, and again with our um, barrier games they can be used for general language skills with just sort of communication or you can use them to target really sort of specific terminology or specific um, concepts within language such as on top of, next to, underneath, another, those ones that might need a little bit more concrete learning um, around because they can seem a little bit abstract for some young people and for some children. So we're going to have a go at them because that's the best way really to tell you about it, um, really. So as I said, you're going to need a piece of paper and some pens. So Lauren and Kate, have you got yours? Ready? <laughs> And what the idea is, is that you are either in a pair or in a group, of people. you all have the same items and then one person takes the lead and provides instructions and the others all join in and, and create the same thing to then see if they've managed to do the same. So that's what we're going to do. So hopefully if you're at home and you're ready to join in as well, please do. If you have any ideas of what we're trying to draw, please feel free to chuck them in the chat. Um, and to put your ideas in, or if you just want to have a go, that's absolutely fine as well. So Lauren and Kate, if you can pick up your favourite colour um, to start with, please. Got them? Yeah. Fab. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a rectangle standing upright. So the little edge is at the bottom. Okay. Okay. 
I can see you're both concentrating very hard on this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and on top of the rectangle, <laughs> um, I would like us to draw a triangle. And if you fancy challenging yourself, you can draw an isosceles triangle. Oh, <laughs> you're taking me back to maths lessons now. Well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if not, any triangle is fine by me. <laughs> <laughs> okay and then if you can swap okay. to a green pen and yeah. within the rectangle at the bottom of the rectangle I would like you to draw a smaller rectangle and put a little dot in it like a door handle And after you've done the rectangle with the dot, I would like you to draw three circles in the middle of the rectangle going down it. And pick up a orange pen this time. In one of your circles, I'd like you to draw a really happy, smiley person who might be waving out of the circle. Well, it's not what I thought it was. Mm. Yeah, I can't work it out yet. I must say, I'm trying to make the instructions a little bit <laughs> questionable or different so you, it's not too obvious. <laughs> And then if you have a purple pen, pick up the purple. Now, we're going to draw two triangles, one on either side of the rectangle at the bottom of the rectangle. So two triangles, one either side at the bottom of the rectangle. And if you want to challenge yourself, they should be right angle triangles. Ooh, okay. All right. Oh, I think I um I think I might have a guess. I was gonna say it's starting to take shape now, our picture, and hopefully everyone yeah. at home is also taking shape. <laughs> and then the final thing we're gonna do is if you've got some red, some oranges, some yellows underneath our rectangle and our object I'd like you to draw some shapes which kind of look like candle flickers or the flame of a candle <laughs> and as I said reds oranges yellows so they really do represent those sort of candle flickers and that was at the bottom of the rectangle that was that was at the bottom of the rectangle really like how you questioned that Lauren, to make sure you understood. <laughs> Feel a bit under pressure. People are going to see this. <laughs> I was going to say, my drawing is not the best, but it really doesn't matter. <laughs> Everyone's drawing skills are perfect. And it really is just about seeing if we've got the same thing as each other. Yeah. I'll be interested to see mine next to yours, Lauren. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have we all done? Are we all feeling confident? That was my final instruction. Feeling quite comfortable. So, yeah, I think I know now actually. I've caught up. <laughs> oh, excellent. So, what do you think you have drawn? I think a rocket. Yes. <laughs> I, I think it's a rocket. Yeah, it is a rocket. <laughs> so, what we're going to do is we're going to show each other. So, the whole <laughs> idea of a barrier game is that you both create. Um, something exactly, the, well, hopefully exactly the same as each other. And then you remove the barrier and show each other to see how you've done. And the barrier can be absolutely anything. So if you're at home, it could be a sort of an A4 folder. It could be that you sit back to back so you can't see each other. It could be virtually, you, you could be doing it with nanny and granddad at, 
with them on Skype and you at home. It really can be any form of barrier um, that you create. Or if the child's feeling a bit uncertain about a barrier, it doesn't have to be there. You can still take the lead, draw, they can draw next to you or they can do it next to you so they can see what's going on. It really is how you want to do it. It's, it's really about thinking about the communication, listening to those instructions and repeating them and seeing if you come up with the same thing. So are we ready, Lauren and Kate? We're going to show each other what we've drawn. <laughs> I can see in the chat as well that some some people have got there and other people are saying I don't think mine's a rocket. <laughs> right. Well, here we go. Three, two, one. Okay. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. So, they're not bad, actually. I think we've done quite well. Isn't it interesting? I was determined it was a house, and so I I couldn't not draw a house. <laughs> yeah, I must say I did try and make the instructions yeah. a little bit ambiguous. <laughs> I was thinking that. Yeah. That's not bad. <laughs> no, it really isn't bad. And actually, they were very simple. Most of the instructions went really well. I think where I might need to improve mm -hmm. time or change how I say it is around the triangles. So I wonder if we were doing this really, I would sort of say to my my peer or the group of people I'm doing it with, how could I change my instruction? How, what could I have said mm -hmm. to make it clear for you? Because it was very clear for me, but obviously it wasn't that clear for you. So you can have those conversations around sort of how can you change it? How can it be different next time? And the beauty about barrier games is, is once one person's taken the lead, you then pass the lead on to the next person. So you're practicing those turn-taking skills and they can have a go. They might choose to do the same thing. They might choose to do something different. Um, and it really doesn't matter. It really is about that practicing of giving an instruction, repeating instruction and seeing if we've all got the same understanding. It should be quite fun. And whenever I've done it with sort of children, young people, they, they do really actually enjoy it. And especially if, when they're giving the instructions, I do it completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they find it yeah. so funny. Um, and it, it's really lighthearted way because they, you know, they're enjoying it. They don't necessarily realizing the skills they've done. And then you can show, you can tell them the skills because when you get it right, you can be like, wow, you've done this. You've helped me create this. This is amazing. So they can really see the difference with their languages. And I don't know about Lauren, Kate, how did you find it? Did you find it quite fun, a bit suspenseful? <laughs> Yeah, do you know, I actually forgot the task at hand, what we were doing, which I was just thinking to myself, this is really great, isn't it? Especially when I think homeschooling has been going on for a long time now. And I think mm. lots of parents and lots of young people are kind of finding it a bit repetitive and getting to the end of their tether with it. Actually, this is, you know, we're still learning lots of skills and developing lots of different skills. But I was completely in the moment of drawing my house. I'd completely forgotten <laughs> Doing, but we were doing different triangles I even said I'm going back to my maths days um, and we're talking about next to either side um, so you can really see you know you're developing those skills and you're just lost in having fun doing it it's really great yeah I think it is fun and I think I wasn't thinking about you know if I'm going to do this wrong or not so and mm -hmm. that's quite a nice thing that it's very much about sort of creating something together so I'm also thinking how good this can be for relationships as well and yeah, sort yeah. of being quite attuned and, and really sort of listening and um sort of guiding each other as well because I was very much just listening exactly what you were saying and um yeah there was quite a lot of fun in, in that yeah side of it as well Definitely. I think it's a really good one for building relationships, as you said. And, and as you said, Laura, you know, you can bring any lesson into this. You can, it doesn't have to be anything. Specific. As I said, I just brought maths into it, but you, you could bring history into it. You could bring science into it. You can bring English literature, language, you can bring whatever you want into it. And it's so adaptable. So you can really adapt it to, to your child, your children, uh, the adults who are playing and make it based on their interests. Um, it doesn't have to be a drawing, you know, there's some great Lego ones out there. So if you Google barrier games, there's lots and lots of ones that are already made with instructions. And there are some fantastic Lego ones of how to build houses um, and how to build different towers. So it can, it can be really adapted. And if sort of a picture this big is too much, then you can build it, you can take it right down. It, it could be as simple as putting one brick on top of the other to begin with. If that's 
the level and that's the most appropriate for your child or your children, then that's absolutely fine. You you can start small and you can build it up. So it really does mm. sort of adapt to it. And it can be with one child, it can be between siblings, it can be as a group. It's it's a really versatile thing. So as you said, Lauren, for homeschooling, it it can be an activity that all can be involved with and get so much out of really um, as well and build those relationships between mm between children between siblings so it, I certainly find it really fun and an enjoyable way to a different way so to speak definitely mm. so that's a barrier game um this, we have another game that we're going to try as well so this is more of a verbal game and it's based on articulate um, which I think is another great game um, that you can play and you don't need to actually have the actual game so what's going to happen is I'm going to think of a object or, an, or of objects and I'm going to describe them to you. Okay. How to question me and ask me different things about them. Um, and we're going to see if we can guess what I'm describing. So same thing as before, you know, please join in at home. If you've got ideas of what we're trying to describe, please do them in the chat or just think about it or talk about it if you're at home with different people so are you ready to have a guess <laughs> ready yes yeah we can ask our questions but we could also ask any other anyone that sends any questions in we can share those as well yeah. can we? most yes, definitely help us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <please don't. laughs> great so my object or it's a group of objects I think that you would use every single day. Well, most people would use them every single day. <laughs> okay. An everyday item or objects. Um, and you probably would use them maybe multiple times a day. Um, oh. Certainly you would use them, I would say, typically twice, maybe three times a day. So, oh, um. they're also, oh, have you got a question, Lauren? Yeah, is that, can I ask questions? Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, what are they made out of? Oh, so they are made out of typically metal, but possibly could be plastic or made from wood or even... Ooh. Just having a look round now. Oh, I can see some made out of silicone as well in my, in my house right now. Okay. My question hasn't helped me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you um, use them to communicate? Ah, uh, I would say typically not. No, I wouldn't say you use them to communicate. <laughs> okay. Oh, I can see. Do I you think I have an idea? Where so, would you find these items? Ah, uh, so yes, yeah, so I think. Where would you uh, find them? Yeah, so I think this is going to answer a few in the chat as well. So you would find them in the kitchen. Um, uh huh. Right. Which I think quite I've a few people have seen. As well. yeah. yeah. And yes, so the people in the chat, yes, you do use them to eat with as well. Right. Okay. I think I've got it. Okay, Kate, have you got it? I think some people in the chat have definitely got it. <laughs> I think people in the chat definitely beat us. I think I've got it. <laughs> yeah, we've also had help in the chat. <laughs> Lauren and Kate, do you want to guess? Yeah, should we, should we do a three, two, one? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> three, two, yeah. one. Cutlery. Cutlery. Yes! yes! So well done, Lauren and Kate. You've definitely got the right. And well done to everyone in the chat. Some of you were definitely onto it very early on. I was trying not to cheat. Some people got it. Yeah. Early, I could see. I'm glad I didn't look too early. That was within a few. It looked like straight away. Well done, whoever that was. That was yeah, that was fun. good. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. But again. It's a really great way to think about our, our communication skills, to think about how to describe an object without actually saying object. Um, and for mm. some young people who, you, who might find actually 
um, have difficulties actually retrieving words, it's a really great skill to be able to have to describe what you mean without actually using the word um, and mm -hmm. can be challenging at times. Um, and again, abilities to ask questions and to, for somebody to be able to respond to questions, you're using all of those different communication skills and providing opportunities to, to bring in new words that maybe haven't been experienced before and, and new items. So it's again, a fun way to develop those communication skills and really build on what they've already got. Um, so yeah, so I don't know, Lauren and Kate, how did you find that one? Was that okay? <laughs> Yeah, it was nice that we could ask you any question um, and yeah, it was a bit tricky to start with, but I think the more information that you gave, the more we could sort of work out. We, I know we did have a bit of help, um, but I, yeah, I felt like we could have got there anyway because the way that we kind of took turns and asked questions and got answers and thought a bit more as well. Yeah, it's really good. It took me back to um, sort of being on long car journeys and doing I Spy and playing different <laughs> games like that. And it's just making me think all the time that was learning and developing language. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even realise at the time. So it's really, it's great to have these different things. You can do them in the house. Like you say, you could do them online or syncing with grandparents. Um, if you have mm -hmm. siblings that are different abilities or have different skills, yeah. they can model that language with each other. And, you know, um, like you were saying, another skill can be adapting your language to suit somebody else. Um, another great skill they could do together. I just think it's so adaptable. You could use it in so yeah. many ways and fun. Yeah. yeah, and that's definitely, and that's why I think I really like um, using these sort of games. They are so adaptable. You can change them, adapt them for whoever you're playing with. You can play them as a pair, you can play them as a group. You can even sometimes think about playing them as individually and creating what you would say in those situations. And with some young children, they, they really enjoy that. They love the idea of like building the game to then go and try and trick their grandparents into not understanding or how can we make them the most challenging and the most difficult. So like really building up that. Yeah ability to to think about what they're saying as well to prepare and then to share so all of the different skills um really do come into sort of playing these games and i think someone in the chat also said about um also it develops their ability to retain information to use information um to build on sort of longer more complex instructions so they can be one or two step but you could also make them so you're giving three and three four five instructions once and seeing how many they're able to do so they are really really adaptable mm -hmm. and as I think we've all found can be quite fun even as adults <laughs> so definitely. definitely something <laughs> that you can pick up and um, get on with at home so I really do hope that some of the people who are listening think about how they can adapt these and bring them into their sort of everyday um, homeschooling or if you're an EP how you can bring them into assessment work I often use these different ideas into my assessment work and just have some fun really because that's what it's all about you, you learn through fun so have fun um, yeah yeah so I think that is the kind of the end of our games um, and we are coming up to time so please feel free to put some things in the chat there's lots already in there as I can see there's a quest and questions and answers please Feel free to put some more questions in and um, we'll have a go at answering them as well. I'm just going to have a look. Oh, yeah, someone's put that they got their rocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really like this comment about thinking about using them within a friendship group intervention at school. Mm. Such a lovely idea. That's Actually, great. Yeah, bring them in. Mm and help to build those relationships. As Kate was saying earlier, think about those aspects of relationship building. That's a nice idea. Mm -hmm. Gosh, there's so many comments. <laughs> um, okay, how often would you do this with children? Hmm. Um, that's a really great question. I suppose, if you're just using them in sort of a general sense as sort of to have fun and engage in, um, in play, then I, I don't think there is a, an answer of how often, you know, if the child is enjoying using this as a way to explore, then I would say, that's great. Go with how much they, if they start to appear to be not enjoying it, maybe think about switching it up and not doing it as often. Um, 
if you're planning on using it as sort of a more specific intervention or um, looking at a specific language skills, so really sort of practicing, you know, the, the on top of, um, and I wouldn't be doing that all day, every day, because they, they might get bored, they might get frustrated. So if you are using it as more of a specific um, instruction, I would say sort of definitely try and do it daily, you know, maybe one or two rounds together, um, because little and often it is best, you know, children thrive on doing things in small bursts frequently or, or daily, rather than trying to do it for, for an hour. Um, I don't know if Lauren or Kate, you've got any ideas about that. It's, it's quite a difficult question to answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I think just thinking about working from home at the moment as well. Um, it's nice to, yeah, like you said, break your day up anyway and introduce sort of um, games or short movement breaks and things like that also whilst you're learning. So it seems like quite a good opportunity to sort of do something fun away from sort of what you've been asked to do or, or things like that so it's it's you know it, it sounds it, it feels like something that can be done um in a break or something like that or in a in a sort of game session yeah. you're right they're very adaptable and you know as it we always say don't we being very child-led if the child's enjoying the game it can be mixed up it can be changed round and so I think as long as they're having fun and they're enjoying doing it um, and you'll probably find they'll come back to you with their own one that they've come up with like you said made it really hard so you can't get it and I would say as long as they're having fun and they're enjoying it then I would say as as often as they would like to do it um, I just think it like you say Kate it'd be really good as a little break mm -hmm. in between more formal work um, and just a bit of fun that they might mm -hmm. want to do. So I'd just be very led by how much they're enjoying it and, and what they want to do. Yeah, and as you said, Lauren, as well, they are adaptable. It doesn't have to be a drawing every time. So actually, it, you might do it a couple of times a day, but you might do a building one, you might do a drawing one, you might mm -hmm. create a shape one, you know, it, they, they're quite different. So it, might, it might not even feel like the same activity, but actually based on the same activity as well. Um, so there's that one. So I'm just having a look at the questions again. We've got another one. So they say that they love that these are fun based um, and it's how important is it to value whatever result the young person comes up with? I think it's really important to um, value what they do. You know, whatever effort they put in, that was their whole effort. And that's really important. I don't think the result or the, the, the final product is necessarily needs to be the same it's about the effort and um what they've put into it and what skills they've drawn on so i think it's a really nice one for you to be able to highlight you know wow you really understood um when i said this but actually maybe i could have done a little bit more to help you with that so it's not about them getting it right or wrong it's about that collaboration between the two of them so it's not the result end product isn't what we're looking at it really is about the bits happen in between. Um, I, I think that kind of answers the question. I don't know if Lauren or Kate have gone any more. It's, it's a different one to think about. Mm. I've just seen someone down here say it highlights the importance of individuality. Mm. And I, I think that's, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, and like you say, I think as long as we're commenting on um, great things that we've noticed, the right or wrong really doesn't come into it. It's, it's the skills that have been used. And, you know, even if, you know, sometimes our best plans just don't work out and maybe they might not have enjoyed it as much as we thought. And then we can still be very positive about that and congratulate them on actually, I really liked that great effort that you put in, even mm. though you're not sure about it, you still gave it a really good go. Um, and, you know, it's OK if it's not their favourite game or if it's the best game and they want to do it 100 more times and um, mm -hmm. really right it's about commenting on those individual skills those things that they've brought to the game and their willingness to give it a go actually is the main thing mm -hmm. absolutely and it feels really nice to sort of be able to take the focus off the drawing and you know we didn't hold them up for you to say that's really good or, or you know sort of um, assess it. it was the things that you said was more like oh you listened really well and you know that's you really understand it's that it's that sort of thing that um I think children can take a lot away from when you're thinking about these skills that they have and they can keep and develop yeah and as someone's put in the chat as well 
thinking about, you know, keep it smart, make it achievable so they don't get down. You know, and, and that really is the way of doing it. Think about what you know they're able to do and you can start there because often when you hand the, the, the reads over or the, the, the lead over to the child or the young person, they then might start challenging you and really show that they're able and want that sort of challenge aspect of it. And then if they're showing you that, then you can start to adapt to make yours a little bit more challenging, a little bit harder. Um, so it, it is a really sort of individual thing, you know, work with where they are and then start to extend it because when we're feeling happy and confident, we're, we're able to accept challenge and ready to try a little bit of challenge. So initially it might just be, let's do things we know you can definitely do to get the idea of the game and to get the idea before we start to add those um, challenge aspects into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've got one, we've got one last question, I think, and then um, I've just realised we've got to half past, I didn't even realise. <laughs> Have you any similar ideas for high school students? So I think these ideas can definitely be adapted for, um, for sort of secondary age, for high school or, or for older ones. And again, I think really go with their interests. Um, so if they, you know, some young people really enjoy complex building. So if they enjoy sort of construction, Lego, you, you can make very complicated um, building. Mm. That's what they're into. Um, again, with the verbal ones, they can, you know, I just describe, describe quite a typical everyday object. You could start asking them to describe things that aren't so obvious or things that are a little bit more abstract um, that can sort of, I suppose, encourage them to really think about what they're saying. And again, I think the idea of sort of bringing in that aspect of challenge or say, okay, this is a really simple everyday object, but you've got to describe it in a way that I will really struggle to find it. So thinking about like, what are things made of? How, like, what does things feel? What, all those different aspects to make it different. So they, they can certainly be adapted. And I think it might even be a case of actually asking the young person, you know, I've got this idea for a game. How would you like to play it? What do you think would be good in this game um, to get your friends involved? How could we create it to make your friends think it's a great game? Because they've actually always got so many great ideas. And I'm always surprised at how they think about things differently to maybe how I think about things. So really getting them involved in creating the game as their own game um, to give them a sense of ownership as well. Um, so yeah, so I definitely think it can be adapted to any age range. Um, Lauren, okay, anything to add on that question or? I just think um, you saying about uh, them developing something and making it quite challenging and, and being very led by what they would like to do. It's really made me think of all the quizzes that are becoming really popular at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I thought, you know, what a great way to build that in, especially if you've got maybe a teenager who's not very keen on doing a game with you. Could always frame it like a, a family quiz, um, maybe have a prize, you know, even if the prize is honour. Mm -hmm points um, and that could be a really great way couldn't it that you could build in so many different activities um, into those questions or the little tasks for the rounds um, and I think that's become really popular um, at the moment with all of the online kind of quizzes that people are doing mm. even something like that could be adapted it's just so I think you can just apply it to so many different things can't you and for all um, age ranges all skills um, yeah I think it's really flexible yeah, I think you both just summed it up really well. It seems like the sort of premise can always stay the same, but you can really mix it up with, with sort of following areas of interest or slightly different tools and techniques and things like that. So it's so helpful to know, you know, from, from Sarah that this is what you're working on. These are sort of the fundamental skills that we are actually looking at here. But you, there's so much flexibility to do it however you like and what's, however is comfortable and what works with you and your family or your you know students and things like that as well so yeah great well we are over time and I think we have answered most of the questions so thank you so much for coming along and listening to us this morning I really do hope that you go away and have some fun with some games and communication today yeah. have a great day everyone thank you bye bye <laughs>